Hello, friends. Uh, I'm Vivek Vishnathan, and we have David Belize here, uh, who's the distinguished architect. We are going to go over boost engagement with Heroku and data, Salesforce Data Cloud. This is the standard Salesforce safe harbor. Do not make any purchasing decisions based on what you hear here today or even see. Thank you for all of you for attending TDX and also taking time to attend this particular session. So how many of you are looking to build AI apps or services or apps in general that basically help you connect to your, to your customer? That is awesome. When you're looking to build these apps, one of the first things that your engineering teams need to think about is what infrastructure to use, what kind of security apparatus to have, what kind of DevOps people that you need to hire, what's the kind of skill set that you need to have. That is well before you are even building the single app that basically con connects you to your customer. That's where Heroku comes in, because we help manage that infrastructure as well as that DevOps for you. So you don't have to worry about building any of that. All you focus on is building that experience for your customer and building that app quickly. So what Heroku provides you is the ability to ship fast. We're actually going to see a Git push Heroku main live here today to push that app and get, you, get us started with that demo. You can also set up pipelines that will basically set, uh, make sure that you go from staging to, sandbox, uh, staging to production as well and checks and balances in place as well. Uh, you can also scale on demand, and scaling on demand in Heroku is as simple as sliding a bar from left to right so that you can basically meet those high peak days, uh, for example, Black Friday sales. You can also now build AI apps that basically use AI modules, maybe it be fitting on AWS, in a secure fashion so that you basically the data that your customer provides you uh, is secure as well. So what, does, what is Heroku made up of? So one of the primary pieces that Heroku made up of, is made up of is Heroku Dynos, which is our elastically scalable compute environment did, you know, where, you can uh, where you can build and deploy apps. And this could be AI apps. It could be services that you basically build for your internal teams as well. Then we have Heroku Data, which is comprised of uh, Postgres, Kafka, and Redis. And with Postgres, we now have Postgres vector, a vector database as well. We also have Heroku Connect that helps you move data between Salesforce and Heroku. And it is a bi-directional sync so that you can basically work on your live data that's working in Salesforce as well and push that data back into Salesforce. And we have over a billion rows that we manage in Heroku for Heroku Connect. We also have Heroku Shield, which is a high-compliant environment, which is a network-isolated environment for any customer who wants you know, higher compliance in terms of HIPAA security and so on. Now, all of these products that we just talked about are interoperable with GovCloud as well. Uh, so when you're de delivering those apps or building those apps, one of the key factors is that you need to de deliver relevance to your customer, and you need to meet your customer where they are in their journey. One of the toughest things to do when you're basically trying to meet them where they are in their journey is to bring all these disparate data that is probably sitting in your sales cloud, and your service cloud, you're sitting in Heroku, AWS, all of this together. And then synthesizing that, harmonizing that data, and then generating insights. So once you have that insights or data actions, you might have to surface that in multiple places as well. For example, you want to surface it to a customer who is basically going through that journey, or an internal reps who can basically go and reach out to the customer to say, hey, you might be interested in this product. How do you do that? That's where Data Cloud and Heroku come into play. You can now build that hyper-personalized 360 view of the customer enriched by the data with Data Cloud. And you will see this in our demo as well, because all the clicks that you might make in the app can be streamed back into Data Cloud to generate that insight. Once you have that insight, you can then take those insights and push it back to your Salesforce org using flows or platform events. You can also listen to those using webhooks in a Heroku app, thereby enriching that experience for your customer. Now think about a customer who's basically going through a journey where they're looking to purchase, say, a duffel bag, or it could be an, you know, another product, which has a very high return rate. And you want to basically target that customer so that you can provide another better product which has a lower return rate. You can do that because you can now look at what 
the customer is clicking on, it is streamed live into uh, a data cloud, and then you synthesize that data and then push it back to the customer using webhooks to say, hey, this is probably a better product, and here's a 20% discount as well. Now, when you're building those prompt-based AI apps, you can still enrich the data from data cloud as well as Heroku. And this is in a very secure environment as well. Now, this is the journey that we are going to go through in our demo today. So we're going to start with ingesting data from Heroku using both streaming as well as sync. We are then going to harmonize the data using data cloud, build that 360 view of that customer, and then we are going to generate an insight. And all of this is going to be in our demo as well. In addition to this, we're going to generate real-time actions that is then going to flow into a sales hall. And we are, also going to, we are also going to hydrate a marketing cloud, AI app. We are also going to basically listen to it using a Horuku app using webhooks. But before we get started, let's talk about how do we even connect to data cloud. So before you, be, before you connect to data cloud, you need to basically generate a JWT token for your core Salesforce org. This is a very standard way to generate it. You pass in your client ID, your client secret, and you basically generate a JW2 token from your score Salesforce org. Once you have that token, you then exchange that token for your data cloud token. So here you'll see we are basically passing that token to services slash A360 slash token, and that gives you back a data cloud token. And this is a very important step because once you have this token is when you can stream events, you can perform DMLs, you can basically query the data cloud uh, lake as well. So this is a very important step. And at this point, I'm going to pass it to David Belial, who's going to go through the demo, as well as the architecture for the demo. Thank you so much. Um, how many of you guys are enjoying today? Show of hands. Do not be ashamed. If you've walked too much today, it's OK. You can sit and watch this fantastic demo, all right? How many of you guys have sat in on an Einstein Copilot demo? You guys saw a bunch of that today? All right. How about uh, any data cloud sessions? Anyone stop by uh, the lovely Arup and Abby's booth and watch them do their wizardry? All right, fun times. So what we're going to talk about today is a little bit of both of those things. We're going to extend that to the outer walls, right? the perimeter, the, the bleeding edge, where we begin to interact with the people outside the Salesforce walls, right? the people that our consumers that control our blogs and that can you know, flame us on some social media, right? And that have a good interaction or a bad interaction with our brand or with our ecosystem, right? So you think about a Data Cloud plus Heroku uh, architecture. What are we looking like? Well, Data Cloud, how many of you guys have heard the phrase near core, right? Ever cropped up in any sessions of yours? It's kind of like, I don't know what that means. It sounds like it's close, but it's not part of it. That's exactly correct. Uh, so what you effectively have is you have an application that's installed inside of your Salesforce org, right? Name it, pick a new one, doesn't matter. Data Cloud app sits inside of your org, and then you have this wonderful infrastructure behind the scenes we refer to as Data Cloud, right? So it looks like and smells like it's in your org. Reality is you got a powerhouse sitting underneath, okay? Does a lot of fantastic things. You're gonna see me demo things like data streams and data actions and flows and all that fun stuff. And then, of course, we have Heroku sitting on the right-hand side. Heroku's doing a series of meaningful things. You heard um, Vivek talk about hosting great applications. Uh, we can you know, take this as far and wide as we want. Could be an API, could be a set of services, could be a consumer app, could be a B2B app. Name the flavor. It, it can coexist on Heroku. Um, and what we're going to do as a part of this, we're going to show the demo of sort of the end consumer, but to ground this, so to speak, no pun intended, with sort of the rest of the Salesforce messaging, right? So you've got probably some sales, some service, some marketing, some other stuff, right? And so with Data Cloud, you begin to see where Data Cloud can reach out and communicate and enact action, right? The whole point of Data Cloud, for those that have sat in on sessions, hopefully you're starting to understand what it actually is, you're starting to see oh, this piece is great, this piece looks like it can help. The whole point of doing data cloud is not to have a lot of data sitting in a single place. That is not the point. The point is to help you change your business and enact positive change. 
more revenue, more happy customers, more efficient processes, right? A fantastic, stickier, personalized, engaging experience with your organization, right? The point is not technology for the sake of technology. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is dive into a demo. So first things first, this would not be a Heroku session without let's push some live code. Now what could go wrong when you're pushing code in a live demo? You're gonna see how poorly I write code. You're also gonna see some interesting things like this is running .NET Core. I didn't know you could do .NET on Heroku. You absolutely can. So we're gonna let this guy continue to do what it does. And we're gonna talk through the journey that you saw, right? So the pieces that are gonna occur first in this scenario is that we can ingest data, like for those that have ever experienced Heroku Connect, anyone done Heroku Connect? Okay, think about a bridge, right, over troubled waters, right? We've got data here, data there. We're gonna bridge the gap and we're gonna make meaningful things happen within the confines of CRM. Same thing applies in data cloud, all right? We can also create that bridge, we can shuttle data back and forth. Some of the time that's, you know, some orders that we got from wherever, some of the time that could be some marketing data that we happen to grab from whatever the system. Or in the case of data cloud, you're hearing about personalization, you're hearing about real time, you know, hyperscale, these fancy words. What does this actually mean? This literally means we're gonna take clicks, right? How many of you guys today, every single click that someone does in an application, you're tracking? Anyone tracking everything at the click level? Or are we sort of doing higher level order, you know, error, right, things like that? We're now talking about an era where you can start tracking every click. Now, why would I track every click, okay? Forget that it was possible, is possible, should have been possible a long time ago. The whole concept is that the more personalized we want to get, we need additional information upon which to glean those insights. What does it mean to become more personal? What if I'm doing seven clicks into your experience, I'm like, this site's horrible, and I'm just out. What if I'm looking, it's like, look, I only buy black t-shirts and you're giving me all these pastels and it's just not gonna work, right? I'm out. So engagement and stickiness relates to how well I'm experiencing your brand, right? So what we're gonna see first is sort of this real-time ingestion, the ability to track at that level, at that minutia. Every click that's happening, we're firing, and you're gonna see the impact of what that has in a bit. So let's see what we've got here in our activity. We've pushed some code, there it is. And let's go ahead and launch this site. What could go wrong, All right? So here is our site. Now, coincidentally, um, the same week of TDX, Acme released their investor report, right? I don't know a whole lot about investor reports, but they're gonna do some new flashy, cool products. I'm a fan of the brand, and uh, they're apparently promoting some of this. So I was thinking about going camping with my kids, and this little uh, bag looks pretty cool. So we're gonna go ahead and do what we would normally do. We're gonna go ahead and do some interaction. So I'm browsing a product, I'm adding it to my cart, I'm gonna go purchase this. Now imagine that while I'm doing this, Acme was like, we had no idea so many people would hear about our new investor report where we're doubling down on our camping gear. We've promoted these products thanks to the flows that are happening within CRM and Marketing Cloud. And I am now browsing this and I'm a pretty big spender. Uh, unfortunately, um, there have been some manufacturing defects with this particular duffel bag, so they're being returned. The battery charger that is supposedly built in that I'm not gonna get stranded because I didn't have is having some issues. So there's a little bit of a quality issue. There's also a little bit of an inventory issue, right? So while I'm doing this, imagine on the CRM side, we have this interaction going on, right? So I'm gonna browse these products. I'm about to check out, if I can find my mouse again. There we go. All right, so all of these clicks are happening. We talk about data cloud handling the real-time personalization. I'm about to check out of the system. What's happening behind the scenes? Now, behind the scenes, we have data cloud. Now, we talked about the ingestion. The ingestion happens sort of at a scheduled, sort of a batch, like you're used to seeing with things like ETL jobs, right? Sync from point A to point B. But what we just did was we created a stream, and we said that this is defined in the form of a web mobile SDK, right? So you notice here my click events is a web mobile app that uses a data cloud web mobile SDK. All of those clicks are firing in. And we're gonna say, okay, well, so imagine I had a Kafka, right? We wanna do 100 million messages a day. We're gonna fire all these events in so that we can IoT, think clicks on a website, et cetera. So we're firing these things in. 
and we're going to go ahead and harmonize. How many of you guys have heard the word harmonize and you still don't know what harmonize means? You're like, it kind of looks cool and smells good, but I'm not sure exactly what it means. Here's what it means. What it means is that click is defined as these eight, nine, 10 fields, right? So a little payload came in, a little message came in, and I got these fields, and I need to make, make sense of that. CRM is like, no idea what you're talking about, right? So CRM's got contacts and leads and accounts and inventory and product and all the stuff flowing in a data cloud, but I need to map these things. So I am a cookie, I'm a user ID, I'm an email address, I'm an ID of some sort. We map that into the model the data cloud understands. The model in data cloud, just like you're used to in CRM, I've got the account, contact, opti, whatever. Data cloud takes that to a whole nother level. It's a superset of that model, right? And so I map this into that model, and I say these clicks are gonna mean something to me, and we're gonna do that in the form of a model. So here, you notice that I've got my clicks. It's a custom data stream flowing in. I'm getting millions of these events flying, and I wanna start to look at user behavior. I'm gonna see the people that are clicking and not checking out. I'm gonna see the people that are clicking on these colors, but not these colors. And I'm gonna look at your entire history, everything you've ever bought. I'm gonna look at all the stuff you've returned. I'm gonna look at inventory in real time coming from another system. Maybe that's in Snowflake, maybe that's in SAP, could be BigQuery, whatever it is. Right? We've unified this stuff, we've unified the model, this click flows in, it relates to an account and a contact, and that federates out to all the other data. So now, I have something that makes sense to CRM, it makes sense to my inventory, it makes sense to my support group, it makes sense to the user who's about to check out with the product. Meanwhile, we still have some, uh, some manufacturing issues, some quality issues, we're gonna get to that, okay? But, what are we gonna do about the fact that somebody is doing things in real time, and I want to engage with them in real time to save them from a potential problem, to prevent a support ticket, to prevent something going wrong in my brand or my distribution, right? So what we're gonna do there is we're gonna say we're gathering all this information, but it's useless unless I act on it, okay? So the first thing we need to do is decipher what it means. We refer to those as calculated or streaming insights. So this is where we say sort of, Listening to our, now imagine the old school days of listening. Remember, how many of you are old enough to remember there was two phones in your house and you could pick up the other one and listen to who was talking on the phone, right? So imagine that at scale. So if I'm just listening in to this hour-long conversation, trying to remember everything my brother said, it's gonna be kind of hard for me to get it right. But if I had five or 10 phones and I delegated to my friends, okay, your job is to listen for these keywords and your job is to listen for those keywords and when we're done, we're gonna have some pretty accurate insight into what that call was about. So imagine in data cloud, we've got all these little hamsters running, we've all got jobs, and we're all gonna listen for these markers, right? I'm gonna look for pauses in the clicks. You're clicking along, you're doing great, uh-oh. There's now a 13 second, now there's a 37 seven second pause. That presents a potential problem, right? So you're now gleaning all these insights and you're saying, is that a negative, a positive? Is that a sentiment? Is that a something going wrong? Is that an order about to fail? Right, so these, these insights are now gonna translate into an action, right? The actions in Data Cloud um, follow one of three things. We have the logical interaction with core CRM. This is where we enact a flow, right? So I could say, if this, then create a case. If this then, fire an alert to the account exec who manages that account. We could also fire this into a journey, and I'm gonna show you this here in a bit. Right? We could also then say, you know what, that consumer application that is powering this, this commerce experience, maybe I wanna throw an in-app push to that individual and say, hold on, there's something awry with this product in your shopping cart. Before you check out, hold on a second, let's engage you, right? So keep me from doing something that could be a bad experience. Make me a stickier customer. So, we're gonna take these actions, one of which would be a flow, right? So one of these actions that we've defined is, if you're listening to the wire, and you detect this heartbeat, this anomaly, this threat, go ahead and invoke a flow. And flow does what flow does, we all love it, right? Which is a whole bunch of great stuff. Fire off an alert to the AE, bubble something up. Now, how many of you, again, have seen Copilot? Show hands, okay, so you should all be experts at this. What does Copilot then do? I'm not just gonna tell you something is going on, I'm gonna help you take action, right? 
So here is an email composition, here is a replacement product, so this is a higher quality. Maybe it's a slightly different color, so he's gonna be a little upset that he doesn't get his black shirt, right? But we got a different product that's higher quality, that has more inventory, maybe a different color, so we're not acting in his best preference, but here's a 20% or whatever the discount threshold is. Let me go ahead and fire that in, okay? So Flow allows us to do all that beautiful stuff when you combine that back with, um, with Copilot. Now, behind the scenes of marketing, right? There's marketing that does what marketing does. Fire an email, do a various and sundry things. But who knew that Marketing Cloud and Heroku were distant cousins, right? Who knew that we, these things could actually play together in the same sandbox? So what I have here is another beautiful um, Heroku application. Now, I don't know from day to day what's gonna happen with this app. I don't know if suddenly we're gonna fire off 670 emails. I don't know if suddenly 1,000 people are gonna get blown up. Whatever the case may be, I need to go ahead and act on this. Now you notice that this has a little basic dyno. And we know for the sake of production, we're gonna beef that up a little bit, all right? This concept is what Vivek talked about earlier when he talked about auto scaling and the concept of, of anticipating you know, thresholds being exceeded. So in this case, I can scale up, scale out. If this was something that required a little bit of calculation, right? Determine what kind of discount level to offer this guy before he checks out. Maybe I have to go to three places, do a little bit of math, come back with that and, and I'm good to go. So maybe I need a little bit more beef, right? Conversely, if I've got a thousand people that are gonna suddenly hit this thing, I could drag this and I could literally say, I want my web cluster to be more than just one or two nodes in the cluster. Or, because I'm very lazy, I'm gonna do neither. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna beef this up, I'm gonna confirm this, and I'm just gonna turn on auto scaling. Auto scaling is basically gonna say, listen, I'm gonna anticipate based on what's happening under the Heroku platform, I'm gonna see that you're now firing a bunch of these events and messages quicker. I'm gonna go ahead and scale that up, and we're gonna then, as needed, scale it back down for the sake of cost. So what is this app, what does it do? Well, imagine that one of those actions from Data Cloud was let's go ahead and fire off a you know, uh, conciliatory email, basically saying, I'm sorry we didn't have black, you know, appreciate the engagement, blah, blah, blah. Well, when that email fires, I wanna see, have they come back to the site and re-engaged before we go ahead and fire that off? Maybe they came back, they saw that there was an orange bag and they really liked it, or, or a green shirt, and went ahead and finished the process out, right? So what we can do here, that app that I was just showing you here, right, this click count, happens to show up here inside of Journey. So now I can come and I can drag these sorts of activities, right, querying of a nice little uh, data graph. I can drag these into my Journey, and as Marketing Cloud Journey Builder continues to fire, it says, wait a second, let me invoke a custom call out to Heroku. Let me do that beautiful pro code that we've written. Let me come back and let Journey continue to do what it's doing. Right, so this is where you're truly getting, okay, maybe out of the box it doesn't fully do exactly what you want. Now you can extend this with Heroku seamlessly, right? Marketing's gonna love this, right? It's exactly the same code that you were using to build the site to begin with. It's exactly the same auto scaling that Vivek was talking about. It's the exact same, oops, I accidentally deployed the wrong piece of code, let me roll this thing back, right? All through um, both a combination of Data Cloud, Heroku, and uh, Marketing Cloud. Now, the third piece, of the data cloud environment, the third action that we're gonna take, right? Again, this is not about data, this is about acting upon intelligence and insights that we're gleaning, making engagements more sticky, more personal, and more real time, okay? So what we see here is a list of all the clicks that I was doing, right? So browsing the site, adding stuff to my cart, perusing around, and then those were being fired into data cloud. Data cloud was listening on the wire, writing stuff down, invoking certain actions where needed, and then it came back and it said, you know what? This is the type of engagement. I don't want him to check out because he's gonna have a bad experience. So two things are gonna happen. One, alert you in the cart. Wait a second, don't check out. This is something that we need to address. Meanwhile, Copilot on the CRM side who got that same alert is gonna sit here and say, let me go ahead and engage that consumer in real time. Let me give him a little bit of a discount, give him a second option on the inventory, et cetera, okay? So, what is powering our lovely experience on the Heroku side? There's Copilot for your CRM, there's Copilot in that environment. What about on the Heroku side? So on the Heroku side, we're gonna come into a Heroku add-on and we're gonna create a digital assistant to drop into that Acme e-commerce site so that as I'm browsing, 
as I'm engaging with your brand, I'm not just getting a pop-up that says there's a problem in your cart. Okay, what do you want me to do about that? Not check out? Fine. I abandon, I'm out, you just lost a deal. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to inject an intelligent you know, digital assistant into this Heroku experience. Now, this is a Heroku add-on in which I can come drop in my Acme site. I can drop in maybe my knowledge base. I can maybe upload you know, the investor report, all of these things that may be relevant to the experience on Heroku. So some of those relevancies will be the database in which I'm storing a lot of these transactions and interactions. The second thing I might be doing is coming in and looking at the click events and previous orders that this individual's taken. Okay, we've already got the investor report that flowed through. We're gonna grab this JavaScript code, we're gonna drop it in my, my uh, experience, and we're now gonna get a lovely digital assistant, okay? So now we've got a nice way for the consumer who just got a pop-up that said there's a problem with an item in your cart. Now I start engaging, right? I get a little prompt that says, the item in your cart happens to be having some quality issues. We love you as a customer. We've got a few options for you. Meanwhile, on the backside, my lovely account rep who has intercepted this, that I'm about to do something that may be you know, a bad experience to the brand, when you pair these two things together, what now happens is I am not only engaged by a piece of alert notification code, I'm, ex I'm interjected by a nice digital assistant that is starting to give me some information about it, automation, and then I'm injected by the fact that this rep has reached out to me personally and said, you know what, we have a different product, got a different color, here's 20% off, we appreciate your business, keep going, right? So all of this brings us back to what was the point of Data Cloud plus Heroku? You've got the ability to push this code in a way that is extremely simple, productive from a developer perspective. From a DevOps perspective, you've got the, the reduced administration, so let this thing auto scale. Let us have that flexibility of how we build applications in a meaningful way. We have the ability to now stream all of that information. So now we can do real-time workloads. We can start personalization. That is leveraging Data Cloud to do it. We are, of course, leveraging the interactions with things like Marketing Cloud. Data Cloud becomes a place where not only does our CRM and our marketing and our Heroku and any other source come, but we then unify that, we translate that into action and that action can now be easily extended to the outside world in the form of a nice, lovely digital assistant. And that assistant becomes something that is partially automation and it becomes something that is partially human so that we can ultimately have a better engaging experience, more real time, more relevant to me, something that improves my perception of the brand, something that creates a sticky customer and brings me back you know, asking for more. So one of the biggest things about this topic is that we like to answer questions and we like to dig in, peel back the onion, lift up the hood, dive in. So with that, that's what we had to share. Uh, we wanted to... Um, so David, yes. Uh, one of the things that we looked at was the webhooks yep. piece that we dragged into the flow. Yep. Can we look at the code that basically listens to Data Cloud using the webhooks in Heroku, the app that we just built? Uh, yes. So in this particular case, this is the code This I mentioned was a, uh, a .NET application sitting on Heroku. This was the code that we just pushed. Um, and we have a series of things. So here is our webhook that we're effectively pushing. So that little consumer app that we were looking at here earlier. This is doing two things. One, it's doing the normal write into our Postgres database. The second is it's waiting and listening for the data action to happen and be invoked. So here, my webhook is running inside of that application waiting to be called and evoked by the data action in Data Cloud. Now, what if that uh, code that I pushed earlier, you guys saw me do that git push, right? So here we pushed our code, but you see there's kind of some issues with it. So here's what we're doing on Heroku. You know, that code was kind of okay, but not really. And we shouldn't have shipped it. How many of you guys, be honest, how many of you guys have just shipped code and not cared? Is that a thing? Is it still a thing? We still do that? So watch Heroku. So Heroku says, you know what? Thanks, but no thanks. We just rolled back the entire environment. Okay, shouldn't have shipped that product. Wasn't a good deal. We just rolled the entire thing back. So should I have done something in that webhook that wasn't working? The time to recover from that is extremely short. Welcome to Heroku, right? Thoughts, questions? It's a lot, it's a lot going on.
Yeah, mildly interesting. This was your siesta for the afternoon. Yeah, it is. It is. How many of you guys are looking at um, at some Heroku workloads, some data cloud workloads? Anyone? You got a store? You got a you got a use case? What are you thinking? Uh, sure. Uh, if you don't mind, we got a quick mic. Maybe it'll be easier for. Yeah, we're with UCSF Health, and um, you know one of the things we're looking at is uh, low friction patient engagement in certain scenarios. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, web app as opposed to mobile app based uh, engagement. We're a heavy Salesforce user, so um, you know pushing out end marketing cloud uh, and data cloud actually. Um, you know personalized experiences based on you know clinical and non clinical data. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. So a couple of things that come to mind there. Um, one is in terms of the you know engagement on the the marketing side. I think you know if you stop by the data cloud um, booth, you're going to see some fantastic stuff with Copilot and how it can help accelerate sort of that reach out to the patient, not only with automation but also with prompting and helping you reach that out. On the Heroku side, uh, we have a lot of uh, workloads in that space um, centered around what we refer to as Heroku Shield. Heroku Shield is our um, compliant environment. And so this is something that allows for us to um, create what we call a shield space. The shield space is, is a you know, HIPAA compliant environment upon which you can do all of the goodness of, of the application development that we showed earlier, but doing it within the confines of the veiled walls of, of something as HIPAA compliant that uh, again attaches to you know, whether it be Health Cloud or another instance of CRM to be able to deliver those workloads. So very cool. Other thoughts, questions? Anything you want to? Yeah, so somebody else had a use case as well that they were working on. Maybe not. I think she might have stepped out. Yeah. So one question I had, that webhook that we got from Heroku, we can then use that to push it to any other system as well, if I'm not wrong, to, you know, say Absolutely. Slack or WhatsApp. Absolutely. Yeah, we've got a, a few ways to do some of that engagement. So the, the question was, can we leverage that webhook to effectively point into and interact with other systems, right? So in this case, this could be something where not only did we push this into CRM as an alert, but what if I'm not in CRM? What if I'm not in that environment, right? So I could push that to a Slack message. Slack's not responded to within a certain you know, number of seconds. We're gonna go ahead and flip you to a WhatsApp interaction and let you go ahead and interact on the fly, right? Some of the cool things that, that are happening, when we talk about building these sorts of experiences on Heroku, um, it's, it's sort of hard to imagine some of these things being you know, realistic. Um, and as a technologist, not on the sales side, I can tell you that it's, it's very cool to see, is the concept of when we talk about highly personalized applications, we're not talking about you know, the cosmetics per se, right? What we're talking about is the engagement. So what if I'm in, let's say I'm filling out an application, you know, I gotta fill out a bunch of paperwork, and I suddenly realize I'm halfway through and it's time to pick up the kids and I'm late, I forgot, right? So I suddenly grab my phone and I'm out the house, but I'm halfway through this, this application process. Does the system know that I have abandoned that engagement right there? Because of telemetry flying into data cloud from Heroku, I now know that we just hit pause. But you know what I also know about you? Because we're engaged on the handheld mobile application, we now know that you're active on mobile. So we're gonna continue that process. Do you wanna continue on the fly? You're like, yeah, I'm driving in the car, I can do it via voice. So what happens if we were to then switch you to a voice prompted experience while you're driving to pick up the kids. That application continues on in a very different way. Right, I'm sitting there plugging it out, filling it out, and it's okay, gotta go. But what if we then continue that process? I personally, I don't know about you, I've been in the middle of applications before and it's like gotta go. I guess I'll deal with this later, right? So when we talk about building these new experiences, we're not just talking about it looks better and it's faster and whatever. We're talking about being able to add that level of per personalization of interact with me when and how I need to be interacted with. Don't just assume I'm behind a laptop. Don't just assume I'm on a, on a mobile device, but pay attention to my behaviors, right? Maybe during the week, during working hours, my behavior is like this, but maybe nights and the weekends are slightly different, right? And it's not about gathering that information. It's about giving the telemetry that lets us make those intelligent decisions and make the engagements more, more personalized. And just oh? picking up on the healthcare, uh, my wife is a doctor, and they generally have common medications that they prescribe to somebody who comes in with diabetes. 
uh, we, they have an AI model that's probably running on AWS. Can we securely connect to that and use our patient information? Absolutely. To so, help so them? Great, um, great call out there. So um, for those of you that would like to check out, we do have, um, if I can type, which is very hard for me these days. Um, we do have at the AWS Heroku booth, we do have a, um, an architecture that effectively shows you all of the different components. So if you're in sort of this hybrid world of I'd like to leverage, say, SageMaker and my learning models there, but I would also like to leverage Copilot on the internal side. Maybe I join those two together with Data Cloud, bring your own model. So now I'm leveraging SageMaker, I'm leveraging Data Cloud. Copilot's tapped into that, but I want to extend that to my consumer. You now have Heroku AI Digital Assistant that's tapped into the Data Cloud data information, which is also being grounded with your SageMaker LLMs and your grounding of, of Data Cloud data. So you now have this trifecta of being able to leverage the assets that you've got on AWS and the learning models that live there with the grounding of information and the bring your own model to data cloud. And it's like a nice little AI party. It's fun. If you guys also want to dig into some of this, we're all at some point at either the data cloud or the Heroku AWS or the Heroku booths. And we're happy to dive deep and show you some of this. Yeah, question. When you're into the marketing process and the process, mm -hmm. who is thinking uh, marketing process Yeah, so it's, um, it's very interesting because ultimately, um, so the more you're exposed to data cloud, the more you're gonna see sort of the, the concept that data cloud has built in the ability to extend. So if we look here, uh, we now have the segmentation, the activation components, right? The ad campaigns. So although it looks like it's sort of at the end, right? The reason for that from a data cloud perspective is because we have to first understand not only who we're dealing with, right? So if you're in 10 different systems as 10 completely different personas, I'm not exactly sure. So I have to say, well, this system can interact with that version of you. This one has to interact with that version of you. And when you unify all of that with data cloud, you then have a, a 360 degree view of the individual. Once you have that, you then want to gather some insights. Okay, when, what's his preferences? What's the personality? What's the engagement type? then my activation of how I interact with you can then happen in a more meaningful way. So it's not necessarily that marketing comes at the end, it's more that we need to do a little bit of lifting to make sure that that engagement with you from a marketing perspective is actually personalized and relevant when and where you need it. Does that make sense? Um, now from a co-pilot perspective, um, you've got you know sort of twofold. You've got the within the walls of Salesforce, right? So the ability to look at the interaction between um, the events and the records and the activity that's happening within CRM and that that's happening within Marketing Cloud. Now that's where Data Cloud unifies all that and lets us sort of have you know, a complete view of that. When you apply Copilot to that, what you get is the ability to then act on the totality of information. So I could, for example, apply Copilot to just Sales Cloud or just Service Cloud, right? That is not a, a totality you know, view of 360 degree view of me. When you attach that to data cloud before activation, what you get is now a, a much more personalized, much more refined way of engaging so that when I then engage the service agent, when I engage the, the, the patient advocate, whoever that may be, when I then reach out to engage the patient right, on the external AI, I am now doing that in a much more refined, much more personalized way. right? So these things, it's sort of one of those like, you can crawl, walk, run, right? You gotta, it's up to you really, sort of the appetite for, for doing that. But Copilot, generally speaking, um, although it can do sort of all of the above, um, the more refined you make it, the more effective ultimately that marketing is gonna be. Make sense? All right, I think we're at time, but um, if any of you guys have any thoughts, questions, um, you wanna dive deeper into it, again, we've got the data cloud uh, under Data Ridge, right? That's what it's called. Um, some fantastic uh, folk over there. We've got the AWS and Heroku booth where you're seeing a lot of the AI and how the multi-clouds all work together for good. And then we've got the Heroku booth sort of right outside here on the left where we can dive deep and make it happen. So thanks for your time. Really appreciate it.